All right, so this is a special lecture. It's optional. You could skip if you want. And this lecture will be proved the equivalency of axiom choice or Islam and world ordering principle. <clears throat> so, just some quick review. So, like, what a relation? What is the axiom of choice? Uh, axiom of choice really just the existence of choice function. Okay, and pose sets relate a relation. A partial order is a relation, which is a subset of Cartesian product on X. And it satisfies these three properties, a partial order and a chain, is that you can compare any two elements in the chain. And a maximal and maximum element. So maximal is that for any Y, if you're bigger than the maximal, bigger than or equal, if you have this relation with the maximal, then your guys are equal. And maximum is that you can compare any element with this M and you have this relation. And well-ordered means that for any non-empty subset of X, it has a minimum element like with this order. So note that well-ordered means that it's totally ordered because if you consider a two-point set, right, it has a minimum element, which means that you can compare X and Y. Okay. So let's start proof the law, the equivalency. Okay, so there's gonna be a legendary proof. Okay, so our first is axiom of choice implies Zorn's lemma. Okay, so before that, <coughs> we need a definition. In a definition which is called initial segment. Initial segment. So given a post set and we <coughs> a post set and a chain. Uh, given a D in a chain, given an element in a chain, and initial segment is called P, C, D. <coughs> Anything like this is the set of all C and C such that it is strictly less than D. Okay? So it's really just think about D as a cutoff, right? D and all the elements that's in C, right? <clears throat> so here we have a definition of initial segment. So uh, let me just use this definition, okay? Now, <clears throat> we should argue by contradiction. Contradiction. So, which means that suppose the Zorn's lemma fails. So, we have a post set. Every chain is bounded above, and X has no maximal right because the statement of Zorn's lemma says that <clears throat> sorry I'm uh, uh so Zorn's lemma says that given a post set suppose that every chain has an upper bound then we have a maximal element so which means that a implies b right this is a this is a and has a maximum is B. So we're saying A implies B, but we suppose it's false, which is that A and not B, right? And not B. So every chain has an upper bound, but has no maximal element. This is what we, this is our assumption, <coughs> right? You have no maximum. So, which means that, what can we say from this? Well, this means that, well, given any chain C, 
we have uc upper bound of c right we have the upper bound but we know that uc is not uc is not maximal in x well remember what is a maximal element maximal element is that for any element we have this is true if it's not a maximal which means that there exists element such that this is false right which means that which means that there exists vc in x such that uc less than equal to vc implies okay not implies this and we don't have vc less than equal to uc right or like not equal to not equal to well if we have this is true which means that equivalent of saying that uc is strictly less than vc right because you're less than equal to but you're not equal to right you're not equal to which means that you're strictly less than <coughs> well notice that this means that vc is not an c right because uc is an upper bound for any element we have for any element c we have c less than equal to uc right less than vc right so vc is not in the big set c in a chain it's not in a chain okay now for each okay we we call elements like VC a strict upper bound of C. Okay, we call a strict upper bound of C. Now for each chain C, we define we define SC to be the set of all such that UC strictly less than V. Okay? Well, we know that SC is not empty, right? Because <coughs> We see that every chain is bounded above as no maximal. So by so by our argument here, right, we can always find we can always find a strict upper bound. Right? So this SC is not empty for every chain. Right? So also Okay, we define this. Also the empty set is a chain right empty set is a chain because what the definition of a chain is that for any elements right for any elements blah 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 blah, blah. well if you say it's not a chain that means that there exists element in the empty set such that blah blah, blah which is uh, obviously false so it satisfies the definition of a chain vacuously okay so it just it's just a chain by definition so which means that let let this is not empty be the set of all chains in x okay it is not empty right and for each c we have sc is not empty right and sc is an x 
right? So from here, you might guess that, yeah, we use the axiom of choice. By axiom of choice, we know that there exists an element f uh, to the union of such that such that for every chain f c picks the strict upper bound of c okay <clears throat> for any moment it picks a strict upper bound of c well note that well if the chain is the empty set we define f is just equal to some x naught for some right so even for empty chain we still have a, we still have a element okay cuz cuz why because fc is an sc right fc is an fsc right but sc is set of all strict upper bound for the chain c okay so here we have the axiom of choice okay now for a new definition we say a set a subset of x has property L okay it has the property L if we have first is that the partial order the order this on X restrict on a right passing to a is a is a well ordering okay so this is the meaning and second so it's a well ordered set second is that for any x in a we have x is equal to f of p a x okay p a x so <clears throat> here's some note right so why can we define this well because we know that a x is well ordered right so we know that a is a chain it's a totally ordered set well right if it's a chain and we know that p a x subset of a is again a chain right so which means that p of a x is in the set is in the set of all chains which means that f of this makes sense Right, so this makes sense. Okay. All right. So now we keep going. We first make a claim. First claim. Claim one. Claim one is that. Claim first claim is that. If, a b, a b subset of x as property as property L if a b subset so so L uh, have property L and a is not equal to B then either A is an initial segment 
fb or we swap bna so this is our claim or b is an initial segment of a okay so this is our claim so this is our claim all right so here i'll make more notes so note that well we know that empty set has a property l right if just go to check l is well ordered is well ordered yeah and for any element in empty set is vacuously true so empty set has property l right <clears throat> but but we need a set we need a set to be not empty to define initial segment of the set of that set right because recall our definition of initial segment initial segment is that we pick a chain and an element in the set right so we need a set to be non-empty to define initial segment of the set right so we can't have we can't have a okay uh, so just some note so oh well, so we can't have a equals to b equals to empty set because well our claim is that if a is not equal to b so yeah and also if a is not empty but b is empty right b is if a is not empty b is empty well, we pick, okay, so now since A is not empty subset of itself, A is not empty subset of itself, so we pick A to be the minimum of A. Then we know that B equals to PAA, which is an initial segment. <coughs> Similarly, if A equals to empty, if B is not empty, symmetry, right? Or you just, you just swap A and B, okay? Okay, so now we consider, we consider A, now equal to B and A B not empty. <clears throat> well, without loss of generality, we assume A exclude B is not empty, right? So potentially we might have potentially we might have B as a proper subset of A, right? Potentially. But if we show this, and we can also show that if B exclude A is not empty, <coughs> we still get a claim. So it doesn't really matter. It's just without loss of generality, right? Okay. So from here, um, we let we let X to be the minimum of a minimum of minimum of a exclude b right because it's non empty since since what right and a is well ordered right a is well ordered now p 
we should have p a x is in b. Okay, so this is our p a x is in b. Why? So if a is not in b, now if a is in a, then a is in this set, which means that by definition of x, right, we have x is less than equal to a, which means that a is not in what? P a x, right? Because your grid equal to your n a, right? But your grid equal to x, so definitely you're not in this set. Now, if a is not in a, now since we have p a x subset of a, which means that a is also not in p a x. So really, we show that if it is not in b, then you are not in this set. So, so this is a subset of this. And we also have. <coughs> okay, so we show this. Well, now we see that what we want to show is that b is a subset of p a x. Right, this is what we want to show. Right, this is what we want to show. This is what we want to show. This is what we want to show because if we show this, we, we already have this. If we show this, then what? The B is an initial segment of A. Right? So, if not, we, sub we prove it by contradiction. Then we know that this is not empty. Right? Because we already have this is subset of B. And we don't have when we have B is not equal to this, which means that it's a proper subset of B. Right? So we define Y defined as the minimum of um B excluding P A X. Minimum of this set is Define right because B is well ordered, right? B is well ordered, and this is a non empty subset of B, right? And first, we show whoa, we show that P of BY is a subset of P of AX. Okay, so this is what we're going to show. We're going to show this is true. So, again, we show it by if A is not in P, A, X, right? If A is in B, then we know that A is in B, but P, A, X. Well, this means that Right, we have y be the minimum, then we know that y is less than equal to a, which means that a cannot be in the chain, right? Because you're in b and you have this order, so you can't have this. Now, if a is not in b, so no matter what, right? If you're in b, you're not in b. Now, again, similar reason, subset so of b, which means that a is not in B Y. So same reasoning. If you're not in here, then you're not in here. So by contrapositive, right? We have this is a subset of this. Okay. Now, again, we let Z define to be the minimum of A, excluding the set. Right? So we have PBY. We have defined Y, right? Because suppose is not, then we have an element. 
and we pick a minimum of this element, of, I mean, of this set, and we consider its initial segment is the initial segment of PAX. And we, for this inner segment, we exclude it from A and we pick another um, minimum element because A is well ordered, right? A is well ordered. A is well ordered, right? Since, since we have P, B, Y, P, A, X. Right? Subset of A. Okay. Um, well, in fact, it's a subset of B. Right? It's a subset of B. And we also have that a exclude B is not empty, right? So if A excludes is not empty, to A exclude this is also not empty, right? So so this is a non empty subset of A. And where is L order? We pick a minimum element Z. And we have that. And we know that, right, because we have A exclude B is subset of A exclude P, B, Y, which means, and also we have, we have X is in A exclude B, right? If X is in A exclude B, so, well, Z is the minimum here. X is in here. So we have Z less than equal to X. Hmm? We have Z less than equal to X. So here we make a subclaim. Subclaim one. Is that P A Z. B, Y. Okay, so we have our Z here. We define P, A, Z. We show that it's equal to P, B, Y. Okay, what is Y again? It's the minimum of this set. Okay, yeah, I know it is hard to handle. There's so much information, but let's bear with me. We'll be there. So first, we show this direction, right? Now, if A is not in P, B, Y, if A is in A, then we know that A is in A exclude P, B, Y, which means that Z is less than equal to A, right? By the definition of Z, by the definition of Z, which gives that A is not in P A Z, right? Because A is in A and A is greater than equal to Z. Now, if A is not in A, I think you should be able to do this by yourself. I've been repeating this argument, right? A is not in P A Z, right? So we have this direction. Now, for other direction, for this direction. We first show this. We show we first show this sentence. T and P B Y gives that P of A T union T is a subset of P B Y. Okay, so if you are in B Y, then this the elements in A app, like before T is also lies in this, right? This is like, this contains all this, given you have an element in here. Okay, we first show this sentence. Now, by, hop, by hypothesis, we know that T 
as a subset of p d y, right? Just copy, right? Exactly the same. Now, we want to show that this is a subset of this, right? So we pick an element. If u is an a t, but t is an b y. But by is subset of ax, remember? By is a subset of ax. So we have hmm, u less than t, right? But t is in x, so less than x. Which means that, but if u is in pat, the u is also in a, right? So, which means that u is in ax. So, p of at is the subset of p of ax is the subset of b, right? ax is a subset of b, where? AX is, a sub AX is a subset of B, right? But, but U is in B. And we have U less than T less than Y, right? We have this is such that this u is in so u is in b, but we have u less than good t, t is in pby, so t is less than y, so which means that u is in pby. See, a t, you're in by, so a t subs of by, okay. So let's mark it a little ending here. So from here we have shown we have shown that we have shown that if S is in P B Y then A then we have P of A S union with S. It's a subset of P B Y P A X A X is a subset of A. Okay? We have this true, right? B Y A X. B Y A X. Okay, so this is what we this is what we showed, right? For any s, then we have this is subset of this and subset of this is subset of this. Okay, but from here we see that this gives this gives s is less than z. Why? Why is S less than Z? Well, if your S is in PBY, right? So if we see that, oh, if we say S is equal to Z, S is in PBY, but Z is not in PBY. It's a contradiction. Right. Remember the definition of Z. The definition of Z is is an A but not an PBY. But if Z S equal to Z, well S is in PBY, but Z is not, so it's a contradiction. Okay. Now also if we assume so they're not, not equal, so it must be is z is less than x. 
then we know that z is an a right first we have z is an a so z is an p a s but p a s is in p b y right again a contradiction right z is in p b y but z is right z is not in p b y Right? So, so with this inequality, with S less than Z and S is in BY sets of A, we have because your less than Z and your NA. So we have that S is in A, Z. Do you agree with me? Right? So for any, any S, for any S, right? For any S here, we have S in here. So this shows that P of BY is it a P of A Z? Right. So we have shown this direction, right? P B Y sets of P A Z. Right? P B Y sub A Z. Okay. So here we've done our claim. Uh for for subclaim. Right? We finished our subclaim. So here we have we assume this is true. We have this A Z equals to B Y. Okay. So we back to proof of the claim. Back to proof of claim. Since we have Z is the minimum of A exclude P B Y. Right? So first we have Z is an A, right? So we have, remember A has property L. Z is equal to F of P A Z, right? This is the, this is, this is the definition of property L, right? We have is equal to f of p a itself, right? X. So we have f z is equal to p a z, but with our claim, p a z is equal to p b y. Well, also b has property l, right? Because y is in b. Right? B also has property L. So Y is in B. So Y is not equal to X because X is the minimum. X is the minimum of A exclude B. Right? So Z is equal to Y. Y is not equal to Z. I mean, y is equal to z, y is not equal to x, so z is not equal to x, right? But remember, previously we have previously we have this, right? And now we have this. Well, this means that Z is less than X. Right? So A X. Right? Because Z is an A. Right? But Y is the minimum of B. 
exclude P AX. So again, we get a contradiction. Right, one, so again, a contradiction. Well, so here, so how come the contradiction comes out? Well, we see that if not, then we have, we can pick, always pick an element Y. But this Y, this Y, we have this and this, right? So if, if, if this is false, if this is false, we can pick an Y, but we get a contradiction. Right, if this is Y, we can get a contradiction. So which means a contradiction. A contradiction. Which means that B P A X is empty. Which means that um, B subset of P A X. Right? So here we have B equals to P A X. Hooray. <sighs> right? So we have B is the initial segment of A. Right? So we have shown that B is the initial segment of A. Alright. So here, from here, we have the, we have proven we've proven this so we have we have shown claim one is good right either this or this right we have proven claim one now now we define we define a new set v is equal to union union of all a such as x such that a has property L. Okay, so V is the union of all subset that has property L. So here we make another claim. Claim two. Claim two is that V has property L. Okay. So first we show that V is well ordered. First we show that V is well ordered. Okay, so for any non empty subset of V, right, then we know that there exists an element a nod x with property L L such that B intersects A nod is not empty. Right? Because if you're a sub if you're not empty subset, then one of your element is in V. Which means that there exists an element with property L and V such that you guys are have non-empty intersection. But since a not well ordered, well ordered, right? And we have this, right? So we pick define M to be the minimum of B intersect A naught. This exists. And we show that, we'll show that M is the minimum of B. Okay? So, so our, our main goal is to show that V has property L. Okay, so this is, we let's just work with this claim first. Okay, so here we want to show that M is the minimum of B. Well, for 
y and b for y and b there exist another element right with property l such that y is an a1 right now a0 a1 they both have property L right so here we have we have cases so first case is that if a0 is equal to a1 a0 is equal to a1 then M is the minimum of what B intersects a1 right M is the minimum of B intersect A1. But Y is in B is in also in A. Right? So we have less than equal to Y. We're good. Right? So for, for Y and B, we have this is true. Now, second case. Otherwise. Otherwise. Then... We have two cases, right? By claim one. We have other two cases, right? Is that A0 is equal to this initial segment of is an initial segment of A1. For some for some D and A1. Right? And also we have they're not equal to each other, right? So, which means that for R, that is an A1, but not an A0 gives what? Well, notice we have M as the minimum B and A0, right? Um, B is an A naught. A naught is a subset of A one, so M is an A one, right? So if M is an A one, then M is strictly less than D, right? Less than equal to R, right? Because R is also an A one, right? But it's not an A naught. It's not in here, right? R is not here, which means that uh, it's, it's strictly, I mean, it's greater than or equal to D because, because why? Because A1, A1 is well, or is a chain, right? So you can always compare two elements. So that, that is what we, that is the reasoning behind. Okay. Well, this means that, this means that M is the minimum of B intersects A naught is equal to the minimum of B intersects A1, right? Because for any element, okay, if you're in A, A1, you're still like, you still greater than M. And if you're in A naught, right, you're already like, you're already the minimum if you're in A naught. Right, so we have this holds, right? Because even you're an A1, if you're an A1 but you're not an A0, then you still have you still have this relation, right? So it is already a minimum of this, and it's again a minimum of this, like after you intersect with B, right? For sure. All right. So, like, even if you're in A1, you have this. So if you're in A1 intersects B, so it's a A1, right? If you're A1, you still have this. So, anyways. Y is in B and in A1. So, okay. This is the first case. The second case is that A1 is 
an initial segment of A9. D is an A9, right? So we reverse the case. Now, then we have that A1 is the initial segment of A0 D, right? The subset of A0, right? So we have, you're defined as the minimum of B intersects A0, right? You're defined as the minimum of B and A0, but is less than equal to the minimum of B intersects A1, right? Because A1 is a subset. So like as your set gets smaller, right? Your minimum, your minimum, minimum, minimum increases, right? As the set gets smaller, the minimum increases. You can show it by logic, but I uh, just for it's, it's not hard to show that, right? So M is less than equal to Y. Okay. So thus we show that so thus for any Y and B M less than equal to Y, which means that M is the minimum of B. So if M is a minimum of B, well B is any B is any non-empty subset of V. And we have an M that's a minimum of B. Well this means that V is well ordered. Okay? So um A check mark. Uh, let's just use a different number, I mean, different color, like A, A, we're fine, B, okay, B. So what is B? We, we want to show that V has, right? So for any, for any X and V, right? We want to show that x is equal to p v x okay so to show this now we suppose for element y and v x right so which means that y is in v and y is less than x right we consider we work with this set first. So for any element here, what well, we can say that? Well, first, from here, you see that there is an A3 such that Y is an A3, right? With property L, yeah? And oh, uh, okay. So First, we also have X and B, right? So there exists A2 such that X is an A2, right? With property L. Yeah? Okay. So here we'll again do case work. If A2 is equal to A3, then Y is an A3, I mean A2, right? So we wanna show that no matter what, Y is an A2 first. Okay, so this is uh, what we wanna show first. So no matter what, Y is an A2. A2 is an initial segment A3D, where D is an A3, right? Well, note that 
as x is in A2, right? x is in A3. So we have x is in A2, and you're also in A3. So first, we here we show that we have A2x, A3x. Okay, so this is what we want to show. For this direction, we have we have A2 is initial segment of A3, right? So is subset, right? Because we already we already given A2 a subset of A3, so we have this uh, relation and. here. Now, we want to show that this is the subset of this for any element in here, right? So for lambda in A3x, we know that lambda is in A3 and lambda is less than x. Now, if lambda is not in A2, lambda, we know that lambda is A3, right? So first, we have, we have um, D is in A3, right? And lambda is not in A2, right? So we have D less than equal to lambda. But here, lambda is less than x, right? Which means that d is less than x, right? But x is an a2. So x is an a2, right? x is an a2. But if x is an a2, then we know that, and we also have x is an a2 and a3, right? So from here, we have that x is less than d, right? So we have a contradiction. Because we're in a chain, right? We're in a chain. We're in a chain, we can always compare the elements, right? So. So, so lambda must be in A2, right? Which means that also lambda is less than x, so lambda is in then A2x, right? So here we see that for any lambda here, we have lambda in here. So as desired, we have shown that this is true. Okay. <laughs> now, okay. So this is our subclaim. And here we keep going. As y is an A3. Y is less than x. So y is in this, right? By definition. Oh, okay, so you're in this set. Well, by definition. Right, you're in A2. Okay, so this is, we have done this case. So the other case is that if A3 is a segment of A2 and D. For some D and A2, right? Then we know that y is an a3 implies that y is an a2. So this direction is so much easier, right? Okay. So which means that 
in all cases, y is an a2. But where is y belong in originally? y belongs to a3. Okay, anyways, y is actually in, um, in v, right? y is in v. Right, and y is less than x. I mean, what case y is equal to a? Okay, so let's just move it here. In all cases, y is an a two. Um, in all cases, y is an a two. Okay, so thus, for any y is in v, y less than x. We have that, right, for any y and v and y less than x. So from here, for any y, v, y less than x, the a2 is already fixed. And for any y, for any y, there's a corresponding a3, like so-called a3, right, for any y. And we see that, and we see that no matter what, y is an a2, right? Implies that y is an a2. Right, and y less than x. So we have right, right. Also, a two subset of v gives what? Right. We also have this direction. This gives what? Um, this is reversed in, right? We also have this, right? So in general, we have they're equal, right? Then, well, finally. Because A2 has property L. But F is well defined, it's a function. Right? A function means that if your input are the same, your output are the same. Right? So so B is also proven. Right? Which means that by A and B. Okay, so we're done here. V has property L. Okay, so so now we have shown that V has property L. Now it comes to our last claim. Claim three is to say that if W is equal to F V. Then union W has what property L, right? So if we, if we prove this claim, then we we prove the theorem. I mean, we prove the we prove this direction. <sighs> okay. So first, let's show that. Um, is well ordered okay so it is not really hard anymore because well if we have it's not equal to b subset of v union w and w is in b right w is in b because because if W is not in B, then we know that B is just a subset of V, right? And we already know that V is well-ordered. V is well-ordered, right? So we just 
discuss the case where W is NB, right? And so if B is a V is not an T, then we know that V is well ordered. If V is well ordered, we let M be the minimum of B in excess V. Okay. Right? So if M is in V. Well, you're strictly less than the strict upper bound. You're less than the strict upper bound, which is W, right? So from here, we have that M is the minimum of being set V, mm. B intersect V, okay, so B intersect V union with W, right? Well, this is the minimum of B um, intersect V union W, right? So you can you can you can um, you can verify this by using the fact that W is a subset of B, right? This is a set theory, right? Elementary set theory. Okay, now if B and S V is empty, then B is just W itself. Well, of course, this is well ordered, right? So in either cases, V union W is well ordered. Okay. Now, secondly, we want to show that let X is in V union W. Well, if if X is in V, already done, right? Because V has property L. So we want to discuss this case. Now P union W X is equal to W, right? Because S is equal to W. But this is equal to V, right? Since, since what? Since W is equal to FV, right? FV, this is the strict upper bound of V, right? Strict upper bound of V. This is the, our choice function, right? So which means that W is equal to F of V, which is Well, what is V? V is equal to this. Okay. So by one and two, right? We see that shows that shows that um, V has, V union W has property L, okay? Okay, so here comes our key part. Okay, so we show that V has property L, V union W has property L, right? We show that V union W has property L. Now, yeah. 
if u union w has property l then you're a subset of v right you're a subset of v because remember the definition of v what is the definition of v right it is the union of all subsets that has property l right so v union w is a subset of v which means that w is in v but w is equal to what our claim is that w is equal to fv right so w is not in v because for any element any element we have any element we have v less strictly less than w right for any v so w is not in v right contradiction okay so we have shown we proved um, we proved that we proved the axiom choice and point Zorn's lemma okay so we're done for this direction now we're gonna show that we're gonna show that Thorns lemma. Thorns. Thorns lemma implies the wall ordering principle. Okay. So, Thorns lemma implies wall ordering principle. Okay. Well, let X. Let X be a non-empty set. And we know that every finite, every finite f can be well ordered, right? Okay. So f is if f is finite then we know that the cardinality is some natural number right well by the definition of a finite set which means there exists element that maps to this to f a bijection right so we can order F by by what? F i less than equal to F j. If i less than equal to j. Um, let's say this is the order in F, right? The order in F. Right. And is wall third by induction okay it is well ordered by induction so it is not it is not well ordered by well ordering principle right Okay, so I think I have to highlight this. Okay. Not by well ordering principle. Okay, so this is, you have to be careful. Okay, so we're not we're we're not circular. We're not circular here. Right? It is ordered was well ordered by induction, it's not ordered by well ordering principle. Okay, so what was the principle is what we want to prove. Or you can say that it is the wall ordered by Thorne's lemma. But anyways, oh even if you if you don't if you're not persuaded if this is not persuasive enough, we can just say that well if x is not empty, then we have the existence of singleton set. 
right? This set is well ordered, right? This is well ordered. So, anyways, okay. So here we let a define the set of collection of all y, y. It's a collection of all set, set where y is let y is a subset of x. Where y is a subset of x and is wall during on y. So so we know that a is not empty. Right, it's not empty because by our discussion here right so it is 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 not empty it's not empty okay now we want to find the order on the set a for any element a and a define We define that A is this if okay, so this if first we have a subset of B and a one we've had this relation in a, a then we can extend this the relation b right and second of all if b is in b not not in a then we have for any a and a okay so think about this Okay, so a rephrasing of this is um, order is essentially Cartesian product, subset of Cartesian product, right? Means that this relation A is um, is equal to relation B restricted on A, right? So this is the meaning, actual meaning. So we have this definition. Okay. So now we want to say that is a partial order. It's a partial order. We want to show this is true first. Right. So we have this relation. And we have these two properties. You could verify it on your own, but I would just, for completeness, I would just let it prove here. So first, remember what is a partial order? It must have these three properties, right? Reflexive, transitive, and anti-symmetry. Reflexive. Now, reflexive. Uh, we know that A is subset of A. And we have their order are the same. Right, and we have A include A is empty. So this satisfied vacuously true, and this is like also true because their order are the same. Right, and for anti symmetric, so we first have A subset of B, B subset of A. Right, so we have these two holes. Oh, this really says that A is equal to B. And also, A exclude B is empty, right? Similarly, the relation on A is the same as the relation on B, okay? Why? Because, because, 
RA is equal to RB intersects A times A. And also RB equal to RA intersects B times B. Well, which is the same as A times A. Right? So essentially they're equal. Right? So this means that A order A same of B order on B. Okay? And third, we want to show the transitivity. Right? So first, we have A subset of B and B subset of some C. Right? Now first we have A as a subset of C. Right? And also A, if A1 has this order with A2 relation, then we know that this. But this again holds at A, A2, right? Because B, 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 C, C, okay? Okay, now, for elements in C, but not in A. If C is not in B, and C is in what? And C and C not and B, which means that B have this relation with C for any B and B, right? But if B is in B but not in A, it means that for any A and A, A, B. But this implies C, B. But C, C, right? If C is in B, if C is in B, Then we know that C is in B exclude A, which means that for any A and A, A and A, we have this relation holds. Right? Yeah, because C is not in A. But C is in B, then C is B and A. But this implies that right so so which means that a order a less than equal to c or c okay this is a partial order so we show that it's a partial order right it's a partial order now we consider we consider a chain chain and this post set we consider this a chain and a post set our claim is that our claim is that union is is in upper bound of the chain. Okay, so we're gonna say that it's the upper bound of chain. So that every chain has an upper bound. So for here, every chain has an upper bound, we can apply Zorn's lemma, right? 
So let's just prove the chain first. Let's just prove the uh, claim first. Well, we let just let you denote the union, okay? Let you denote the union, and for any x, y, u, we know that well there is lambda one, lambda two from the chain such that from the indexes such that x is in c lambda one, y is in c lambda two, right? But, but remember this is a chain, right? If it's a chain, so we either this or this, right? So for any two elements in here, we have two sets like from the chain elements such that contains them, but because it's a chain, it is comparable under this order. But this order, right, this order, if first we have this, right, this relation, inclusion. So either this includes this or this includes that. So, so with a loss of generality, we just let x, y is in c lambda 1. So with this operation, I mean with this observation, we now would define we define a partial order on u. We define a partial order on u. So x u y if exists lambda naught from this such that x c lambda naught y. So we define this if this do we have this if there exists an element in the index set such that we have this relation and some c lambda naught. Okay. Things need to be verified. So number zero is that it is well defined so what it means that so we want to show that we want to show that for c lambda lambda is an index j such that for any such that x y is in c lambda for any lambda in j okay so this is the set of all elements that contains x and y now if x u y then we have x c lambda y this holds for any lambda in j right so for here we're actually saying that this is independent of the choice of lambda naught, right? Because for any others, right, that contains these two, we all we still have we still have this holes. So it is the choice independent. So this is important, right? So now, since since we have x u y, right? Which means that there exists in lambda not in j such that what x c lambda not y right now we see that well for lambda that's in j but not equal to lambda not right is a chain right so first if we have so if we have this right we can compare all the elements here because right this is a subset of 
right? And it is a chain, right? So we can always compare these two elements. So if we have this true, right? Then suppose we have this holds. I mean, then from here, it gives that right which means that x is equal to y right so this forces x c lambda y right because you're either equal to y or you have this relation you can't you will never have this will never happen, right? Okay. Now, the other direction is a lot easier, right? The other direction is a lot easier. Like you might already guess, right? Then, So we're done. Okay. And, and also, we have to verify that order. Okay. So reflexive anti anti-symmetric is easy so I skip now I will prove transitivity reflexivity, anti-symmetricity whatever evity so transitivity is worth to say something about it okay so first we have okay so first we have x u y right and y u z right then we know that x c lambda 1 y and c lambda 2 z right but c lambda 1 and the order on it and also the order if we replace this by uh, c lambda 2 c lambda 2 right they're comparable compare them right so so we can just say that well that x y z they're both and some like c lambda one right then x c lambda one z right then we know that c lambda u z all right so it's a it's a partial order and second thing is to verify that u is upper bound right so we have to verify that u is upper bound now this is not really hard because for any c lambda c lambda subset of u right and also at a1 of c lambda a2 then this automatically implies a1 u a2 right so the first two con i mean the first condition is easy to verify now for b is in u but not in c lambda if u is equal to c lambda then we're done 
right? Because, right? For any b, right? Then this will be empty set, right? If using the c and lambda. So otherwise, suppose u exclusive c lambda is not empty, right? Then from this, we can pick a beta such that c beta contains b. But c lambda c c beta comparable, right? But we can't have we can have what c beta order on beta is. Um, I mean, we can have c beta is contained in c lambda, right? Because otherwise, since b is in c beta, not in c lambda, right? b is not in lambda, c lambda, and b is in c beta, right? So we have, we, we can have this. So we can only have that c lambda or down lambda is less than or equal to c beta in the order on beta. Right? Okay. <sighs> now, which means that if a is in c lambda, then a is what? c beta b. Right? Well, from here, we see that c lambda is contained in c beta. Right? So, a, u, b. C beta contains both A and B, right? Because C is not this and C B. So U is upper bound. Okay, so now finally by Thorne's lemma. By Thorne's lemma. Admits a maximal maximal say is M in this order. Well ordered. So now our this is the claim one. So our claim two is that M is equal to X. Well, suppose not. If it's not, then we can pick an element. Pick X not from X, but not in M, right? Because, because M is a subset of X, right? Now, if it's not, then M is a proper subset of X. Right? And we let M naught is this set. And now we define order on M naught. Define, or we just construct an order on M naught. Is that X, Y, if X, Y is in M, and we have this order holds on M. And B, you might already guess, you might already guess that we want to make sure this new element is the largest element in M, right? Or Y is equal to X naught, right? 
Well, I'll just skip that, right? Easy to check. Is a partial order. Okay, it's easy to check if it's a partial order, but what is what needs to be checked a bit more uh, uh, requires a bit more effort is that it is a well ordering, right? Now, if the empty set not equal to b contain an m not and x not is in b, okay? Because why? Because um, M is already a well order, right? So if X not is not in B, then nothing really, like nothing really needs to be checked. So we just require that this new element is in B. Okay. Right. If B is in X naught, we're done, right? If B is not equal to X naught, right? We let M to be the minimum of B intersects M, okay? Your subset of N. So you're obviously your subset of n, right? Since we have, right? So we have m and not x naught, right? So m is the minimum of b uh, intersect with m naught. Right? Right? I believe at this point, it is easy to check. All right, so here, yeah, so excited, right? And we have this is what it is, it is strictly less than this, right? Right? Because, because we have. In this, but contradiction because you're supposed to be the maximal, but you can find another element, right? You find another element, right? You're in a, a contradiction. Thus x is equal to m, right? And x, m. Well, we'll just replace, right, x, x as a wall order. Okay. So we proved that um, Florence number implies wall order. No. The last easy little piece of cake is to show that while ordering implies axiom of choice. So after this, we're gonna be done. So first, let x lambda, lambda, and the index set were not empty, x lambda not empty, right? 
began with an X, denote their union. Okay? So, first, we let X, X, B, A, wall, ordering. Right, we have a wall ordering on this. Well, which means that each, each non-empty x lambda, right, we just define f, just define the function by f of lambda is equal to the minimum of x lambda, right? Well, isn't x lambda? So we have a choice function. Right? So the right? we're done. A big fat circle number. At this point, I'm just so excited. Right? Alright, I'm I'm just so excited, okay? So we prove we proved our theorem. So this implies this, this implies this, and this implies this. So they're equivalent. Okay, so ah, that's it for the lecture. Alright, thank you guys for watching. All right, see you guys next time.